Hello, my name is Mike Eister. I'm a solutions engineer with Push Technology. Been with Push Technology for almost two years and have spent a career inside of integration. In today's webinar, it's focused on distribution of data from Kafka as a source. So we'll talk about the role of a subscription broker inside of an EDA, an event-driven architecture. We'll talk about topic data models, how data is organized and rules against that data to properly segment it and distribute that. Uh, and then data enrichment via data wrangling and supporting features such as JSON patch, securing and enforcing event data. So ensuring that the appropriate users and roles have been configured and are enforced during the distribution of that data. And then personalization of the data control of getting the right data to the right consumer, and then efficient internet, mobile, and IoT event distribution at scale, uh, performantly scalable. So before we uh, uh, get too far in, I just wanted to kind of show the uh, path that we will discuss in today's webinar. So in Kafka today, you may have coarse-grained events, data and messages inside of uh, Kafka topics that are delivered to a distribution platform in some kind of mechanism, okay, like a subscription broker. So taking data from a log-based broker and then delivering that to a subscription broker and then enabling that subscription broker to segment that data, to separate the data into the components that are requested and needed specifically by consuming application to how we secure that then how we manage the connections in. It's not just as simple as um, asking for data from a broker. It's about maintaining a reliable connection that is fault tolerant, and that is efficient, and then also from the enterprise level, gives you central control and dynamically being able to manage this by your applications, uh, being able to manage it by operations, um, via consoles, et cetera. And then distribution efficiency and scale. Do we send only the current message? Do we send all messages? Um, do we compress it? Do we use Delta streaming? How do we scale this as, as well? And then reliability, you know, what happens when a consumer disconnects? What actions do you take both on that client side and on the service side? And then how ultimately do consumers then subscribe and consume that data. So we'll be going through this type of uh, path during this webinar. And the first thing I'll do here is uh, introduce Diffusion. Diffusion's an event data platform that crosses the boundaries inside of a uh, event-driven architecture, fulfilling requirements for queue and subscription-based brokers. It's a great partner to Kafka for consuming data from Kafka as a log-based broker. And you can see here on the left that we uh, connect with many different event data sources. It could be Kafka, it could be MySQL through let's say uh, collecting changes from data, uh, from a database. And if you have change data capture enabled, then collecting those changes and turning those into events that could be distributed. So that consumed data through our data gateway is the first component. We also provide the capability to create adapters through our data gateway that are part of the infrastructure. They're managed and monitored. And all you really have to do is put in the endpoint logic into that gateway. And then it's something that's managed as part of the intelligent platform itself. We also have some pre-built adapters uh, for consumption. And it's really di uh, bi-directional, but consum consumption and delivery data to um, technologies such as Kafka. Um, the next piece is where we're performing a data wrangling. We're doing that segmentation that I mentioned. I'll show it a little bit later inside of this webinar, but we're performing things like replacing data, masking data. Uh, we're doing things like insert, augmentation, that type of work. But from a distribution broker perspective, it is highly performant and binary. Then the data distribution side of the platform, which then does focus upon the ability to 
deltas to, to support delta streaming, meaning that we're only sending the changes to various different types of recipients for that particular data itself, okay? So it's very flexible. It could be uh, as a service, we do offer Diffusion in the cloud. It's called Diffusion Cloud. Uh, it is a service from us. Customers just simply get the URL for their particular instance of Diffusion and start working with it right away. It uh, could be on-premise, it could be in cloud, uh, or really a hybrid across all of those. Uh, Low-code development as well, having simple SDKs that have APIs um, in most of the popular languages that are out there, such as Python, C, .NET, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Android, uh, and Apple. And so there's a large number of APIs that are consistent and again, um, adapters that are consistent, and then open protocols such as uh, M, um, oh gosh, MQTT. <laughs> um, and then the uh, PubSub also supporting both PubSub and request response types of messaging patterns themselves, okay? So Diffusion is an end-to-end -end platform enabling the streaming of event data, okay? So, like, like any other topic or, or presentation, I'm going to pick on a use case and data. And in this case, I'll just choose foreign exchange data. Foreign exchange data is the FX is basically a, a generic term. Uh, worldwide institutions work with it to uh, exchange or trade currencies of different countries, like from Australian dollar to uh, US, okay? So as you can see, there's no single trading center and the uh, market operates uh, 24 hours a day. The, the reason why this is a good use case uh, and to discuss is that there is a large volume of data um, and there's a large number of instruments. Just think about the stock market as well by itself. You could have millions of different symbols and instruments and data uh, about that that's all organized and that has a requirement to be managed and streamed. And so I kind of got ahead of myself there. So here with multiple sources. So uh, with the FX market data, there's just high volumes of data, you know, large variety of, of that data itself. It has to be performantly uh, delivered, right? So both on the ingest side from the consumption and then performantly uh, transformed, enriched and delivered. And organizations are constantly adding new markets and they have a strategy on how to normalize that data, how to break it up into its different components and reconstitute it into a format that is consumable by any number of different types of uh, consumers and how do you customize that and how do you personalize it? And they're constantly adding new uh, and modernizing clients. They're going through this digital transformation or they've got M&A activity and they're adding new uh, uh, requirements for consumption of that data. And you can see here, the uh, consumers can be foreign exchange dealers or central banks or retail hedge uh, hedgers. So uh, varied requirements for this data, but all requiring some uh, form of that data itself. And so when we look at these sources now, now some financial institutions have well over 200 different types of sources of that data. And these sources now for the purpose of this webinar are being published into a log broker, um, Kafka, for uh, use cases, replay of, of replay, uh, et cetera, uh, analytics. Uh, and these can come from many different types of sources like public, official, and commercial. Now, once that data is in Kafka and the work's been done against it and you're ready to distribute it, then we start taking a look at, in the case of um, currency, FX data, we want to tier our pricing. We have different customer performance SLAs as well. Um, so different throttling uh, and delay features that are needed by the type of customer. Uh, we have client prioritization. And then now we want to get the right data to the right consumer. So we're going to get much more fine grained uh, event data segmentation and supporting wildcards that go to the next level uh, beyond the support from Kafka's wildcard capabilities. And then security to, from the distribution side itself, right? So being able to secure from uh, 
any security subsystem itself. And again, to these types of clients. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later inside of this webinar. So when we just uh, go take a look at the event-driven architecture, I had mentioned it a couple of times now, Gartner had termed that an EDA has three primary types of brokers inside of it. It's got a queue, log, and subscription-based uh, broker. Queue being for um, flexible topic structures and for semantics like guaranteed once and only once message delivery. But in itself, it uh, struggles a bit to keep up with higher volumes of consumers. We're talking about consumers that could be into the thousands, tens, hundreds of thousands, and into the millions. Then you've got the log-oriented broker, such as where Kafka fits extremely well, where there's uh, retention and replay uh, features, analytic use cases um, that are very well suited inside of uh, log-based brokers um, that work with the file system, such as uh, Kafka. And then subscription-oriented uh, solutions for where it's singly purposed uh, for distribution of events, where we have subscription rules against that. Um, and what we find and what Gartner has found that um, organizations benefit from using the appropriate broker type as matched to what the use case is. Okay, so um, choice of what broker to use is critical because its specific capabilities will dictate the architecture and misalignment of requirements is painful and costly to resolve uh, down the stream. So if we start to look at how brokers work together uh, inside of this EDA uh, between Kafka, Q, and uh, also subscription is that we have large volumes of data that um, represented by a freight liner here going into Kafka, file-based logs, multiple sources, coarse grain delivery. And as we start to look at how events are split up and delivered and finer atomic units themselves, like this representation with the motorcycles, we have fine grain segmentation, we have the delta streaming for the efficiencies. We have architectures for fan out for our distribution to multiple hundreds of thousands or thousands, millions of different types of uh, consumers that are connected concurrently. They're active. And supporting that, um, again, PubSub is supported across all broker types um, and request response, but something that is tolerant on the client side. It's not just simply asking for that data and receiving it. It's establishing that pipe, so to speak, for that data itself, that channel, what we call a subscription and a stream, okay? And then using features like conflation, do we send historical data as well as the current value during reconnects or do we just simply send the latest version itself? And so you can see here, the typical consumers of this could be mobile and web. We see that from a, a, the largest uh, use case uh, for this distribution uh, technology, but then also we could have downstream applications that are subscribing for data, uh, B2B types of uh, relationships where we're using replication services from the distribution perspective to uh, seamlessly unify data between partners. And then creating a hybrid uh, architecture where we're starting to establish this data mesh across multiple different brokers that participate in this distribution architecture and then distribution to example apps um, such as uh, IoT itself. Um, more so on the consumption side of IoT, but IoT can also uh, receive data. An example uh, could very well be, let's say a display inside of a cab receiving data, it's subscribing for data. So now I've got a little bit of an environment here and um, I wanted to kind of start talking through that um, so I have a sample host here. I've got Kafka sources um, and I've got PubSub that's happening and Kafka's being uh, populated through Kafka Connect. Um, and these are now going into specific Kafka topics. Now, from the diffusion perspective, we do have a Kafka adapter. That Kafka adapter basically connects into Kafka, establishes that subscription, and then begins to queue the data from specific topics that are inside of Kafka and then start to make that data and publish it into the um, diffusion broker server itself, okay? Now this queuing that happens is really used for fault tolerance inside of uh, the diffusion environment itself. If something, let's say, becomes unavailable or goes down, 
that we maintain the integrity of those messages between our adapter and our broker itself. And we use something called the recovery broker, uh, recovery buffer for synchronization between them when we do that. But ultimately the adapter's main goal here is to collect data from Kafka topics and also to deliver data back into both PubSub, uh, into and out of uh, Kafka, and then to begin enabling the Delta streaming. Now, I've mentioned Delta streaming a couple of times here. Delta streaming, just imagine a television set. Um, and you turn the TV on and you receive that first picture that loads up, that takes a little extra time. Um, and then every pixel by pixel, every change that happens on a binary level then gets sent to that television, just like Diffusion. Diffusion has the ability, it's patented um, for um, knowing on a binary level what the uh, message was and then sending those, those binary changes itself. So there aren't any application-based diffs or anything, anything that consumes extra um, overhead is, is not being done because we're doing it on the uh, binary level, okay? And we see that we achieve compression ratios of uh, 90% in most cases. And uh, my last proof of concept, it went all the way up to 98% um, compression of data itself. Uh, imagine the savings inside of your uh, bandwidth for your applications, okay? But that's what we've got set up here. So we've got our Kafka environment, Kafka cluster, We've got our Kafka topic, we've got our adapter that's configured to subscribe to it. And then we've got our broker server then that the messages are published into, and then it performs all of its wrangling and session and connection management. Now, here's just kind of an example of what um, we are concerned with in terms of configuring the adapter. Um, so, you know, we definitely wanna go after, you know, the name of the, uh, uh, Kafka topic to subscribe to, what the cluster ID is. Um, we can actually have a regular expression to say what it is from Kafka that we need. Uh, number of different uh, consumers that we want to for performance reasons, uh, polling timeouts. Um, what type of data is it that we're pulling? Is it string the, um, here? for the uh, value and again for key value string for key value is going to be JSON. Uh, so it's JSON data that we're pulling out. And one, one thing is that um, Diffusion has typecast built into it. And so when, as you start to publish JSON data into Diffusion, it immediately is aware of uh, JSON. We do have protocol converters that are built into our adapters as well. So if it was, let's say something different like Avro, uh, we would have the capability to potentially um, translate that, transform that into uh, JSON. Uh, for downstream transformation services, okay? And so again, um, here for publishing, there's a setup as well, okay? Now those are also configurable, um, well, configurable one inside of the uh, file-based uh, metadata for the adapter, but also visually inside of our console. Um, so here, now that this environment, I've set it up to collect data, um, now let's talk about the different types of consumers for it. So now I've segmented my data as it's come in. And now I have, let's say, uh, another um, broker that's interested in this, right? So I've got a remote topic. So I could start to replicate data seamlessly through one line configuration uh, between different brokers. These could be in different geographies themselves. You know, let's say in the gaming industry, there are regulatory requirements for distribution of data that assist in um, users placing um, wagers against that data. Well, that data has to be streamed from that locality, from where they're connected, where, where they are live. So there's just one sample use case for um, remote topics, right? Um, we could have a direct client, okay? That's using basically um, our APIs to subscribe to, uh, to that data. Um, or we could have, oh, I'm sorry, that's this uh, use case down here, or we could go, be going back, right? So we could potentially have another feeder that has data inside of it that wants to publish back into uh, Kafka itself. So just some sample technical use cases, okay? So from a, a business use case, you know, we could have IoT transportation data, you know, cars, trucks, vessels um, that's being published into Kafka where now we're enabling real-time tracking, network reliability improvement, um, device responses, enriching the data, 
all through our platform of diffusion, right? And providing the capabilities again for security, fine grain filtering, our deltas, reliable replication, fan out strategies to again, any number of these different types of consuming applications or platforms. And so same story, uh, global equity FX, the data that I showed a little bit earlier um, is just another example of sending instrument details, tier pricing, currency pairs, and figuring this out in real time, highly performant from the larger log files that are coming from Kafka, being able to segment those out. And also you see the word multi-protocol here. So being able to support um, HTTP long running to uh, uh, web sockets to any number of different types of technologies for uh, delivery. And the last one here is let's say for retail, um, a point of sale, maybe a web server uh, ingest, right? So looking at those uh, web logs, right? Doing some sessionization type of work and then minifying latency for end users connected to uh, a website for streaming that data. Um, performing notification and, and real-time engagement with um, consumers from the real-time perspective again through any number of different types of consumers. So let's talk about how we segment this and I'm going to switch back to my FX data. Each one of these different users has a different need for uh, data. So while you see that it's the same data but it's organized and tiered in different ways. You have to be able to pivot these very easily and create these views while not increasing resources on the server. So these represent topic trees, how data is organized. I've got a high level topic of currency. I've got, let's say Australian to US dollars here. And if I subscribe to just this, I'm gonna get all the data. I'm gonna get all tiers of, of data. Now here, I just want the price by tier. I'm not um, duplicating my data to create these different views. It's basically something that we call topic views, topic view specifications, and our domain specific language that performs this. It's regex like, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, you'll see it basic uh, map types of statements. But in any case, each one of these different users then needs the data delivered to them or applications needs the data delivered to them in just a different format but very easily configured. This eliminates a lot of intermediary code, a lot of redundant disk that's needed and is in memory. So when we start talking about a live data model, that's this topic tree that's in memory that allows you to pivot your data in any fashion. So like here, I've got currency tiers. I can see I've got the Australian to US dollar, and now I can start to subscribe to specific um, tiers of that that will have different data inside of it. Okay, so extremely powerful on how I create these topic trees and the currencies is a topic. And again, these are reference topics that add up to become a topic tree itself. Okay, so let's move on. Um, so just wanted to share some ugliness here. Uh, so <laughs> that data comes in and it, it can come in in varied sizes and formats and different types of structures themselves, right? So you could have nested JSON objects, you could have nested arrays, um, redundant data, and you can see that uh, here, I've got a kind of a combination of, of what's going on inside of that. And instead of writing an application that's going to parse this and figure out how to distribute this and how to put it into different topics, um, Diffusion is going to do that for us automatically, but we're going to start out with this FX data in this more complex structure. And so it turns out to be that we've got 10 currency pairs. Okay, so currency pairs like Australia to US dollars with three pricing tiers inside of it. Okay, and so we can start to see and model what our data looks like. Now we can do this in the console um, views that I've shown or you could do this through your application, which, which is the typical typical use case. So we've got our Kafka data, it's coming into our incoming topic, and then we're starting to perform, and we can see here it's coming in through Kafka local that I showed in the configuration earlier, and then now I've got my FX data that's coming in. So let's start talking about how we segment that data. I've got my, my raw JSON uh, data that's coming in, 
I want my first step here inside of my event workflow is to create currency pairs. And this is simply done with a map statement. So I'm mapping my incoming FX data into currencies. And now Diffusion supports an expand feature, which will basically take the content of that JSON data and then say, okay, I want to create a topic tree that's going to be named by pair name. So Australia, Euro, um, and I want to separate it out by the element or object inside of my JSON file that's called pairs. And that's it. This, this basically set up a rule to take that previous uh, look of that file and then automatically create this topic tree. Now my end consumers, all they have to do is really subscribe to this, currencies, Australia to US dollars, assuming that they have the right permissions. So in creating the different views that I showed earlier, now we wanna create our tiers, right? And so now we could also move data around. So now I could say map currencies to currency tiers, but now I'm gonna go one level in. In my JSON structure, I'm gonna go one down and then I'm going to expand the tiers. Okay, so it's looking at that tiers data, like right here in the, this eye chart over here, <laughs> you can see tiers are inside of my data and I'm going to start to expand those. And that's what's creating these different tiers of zero, one, and two. I could name these um, as, as well, but now it starts to allow me to segment and organize my data in a view, again, not um, replicating data, okay? And make that available for different consumption types of use cases, different consumers, different times, different SLAs. So now the next step here and final in my event workflow is that I want to take tiers. And again, you can see some of the padding that's going on and some of the wildcard action that's going on that's not available inside of Confluent, um, or excuse me, inside of Kafka, um, that it's a little bit, um, a little bit deeper. Um, filtering. So it's, it's at that next level of uh, filtering, but um, price by tier, right? And so here, now again, I'm going in and I'm modifying the pathing so that now I'm taking and putting the tier up top and then the currency data underneath it. So I might have someone that is only authorized for all tier zero data. And in the previous screen, I may want to have them just go after the specifically named currency pair. So we can organize the data this way as well. And so you can start to see all of the, the value here. Now I haven't shown some of the transformation capabilities with the replacing capabilities, the masking, removing types of features and functions, but I think you can start to see the value of the segmentation and, and the enrichment that we're doing here. Now let's talk about subscription. So now, what happens when a client connects, right? So when a client connects, when let's say a mobile app connects, that there's an initial connection, it establishes a relationship and connection with the distribution broker, that subscription broker, okay? Next part is that it's gonna name the topics that, hey, I want these topics, I'm interested to those. And then it's gonna add a stream and say, oh yeah, go ahead and um, give, me, uh, give me data against this stream. Now I could have a request response pattern here as well, but um, for distribution scenarios, we, we typically do see that pub sub architecture um, for streaming that data. So here I'm subscribing to my topic. So basically I've connected um, to my, let's say broker distribution, my FX distribution, and I'm gonna subscribe to um, data to currency data. And I name that as my topic. And I can, by the way, come back and um, ask for more um, topics. I, I don't just have to ask for one topic. And my topic selectors can have wildcards and pathing inside of them as well. So I can get as fine grained as I want with my uh, topics and, and subscriptions, okay? And then as updates become available, they get published back to that client, okay? And that client then um, gets that data and then it goes on and performs its own business logic to how it shows that uh, data, what it actually uh, does that. Now, clients will detect loss of connection, but our server will as well. 
And so we have this great thing called handlers as part of our framework. So on the server, on the app side, we will know when a, what a client's state is, when it's connected, what it's doing, and when it becomes disconnected. Likewise, clients will also detect their loss and then be able to either wait until reconnection for a specified amount of time or, or go and perform its own custom process in cases of disconnections, alerts, queuing, et cetera. And by the way, we, we handle queuing behind the scenes of, of that data while that session um, is live. So it gets delivered when that client reconnects, okay? So, um, and then data serialization um, automatically at the uh, transport layer, okay? So there's a lot of value into a, a distribution architecture using a technology like push technologies diffusion to maintain those sessions and connections. Now, I mentioned subscriptions earlier. So with subscriptions, there could be markets, there could be or different markets, we could have the FX data. And I think, you know, we've stepped kind of through this, this example. My, my Australia to US dollar is not, <laughs> not, not in here, but now you can start to see all of the different mechanisms that I can subscribe specifically, give me everything, give me something that's very pointed and inside of our, our pathing logic here. And again, so with these wildcards um, that are being supported and, um, being very focused on specific uh, topics or wildcard topics, and then also giving you the capability to unsubscribe from that data uh, as, as well. So now we're connecting, and I just wanna show kind of an example of, of what this three-step dance is um, for working with Diffusion from the client side via the API. Now we do have adapters again that can connect into Diffusion and take that data and deliver them somewhere. Um, but let's say we have a mobile application or we have a .NET application. This .NET application is basically performing, um, you know, here, let's, let's take a look. So I'm connecting, I'm connecting to my broker. I, the next step here is that I'm gonna connect to my stream. Okay, I'm just highlighting that I've got a, um, a variable that I've created here called topic. But now I'm gonna add my topic stream and then I'm going to go ahead and perform my subscribe. And all um, of these APIs and SDKs are similar inside of these step, steps of connecting um, to the broker, connecting to the topic stream, and then performing that uh, subscribe type of function. Very straightforward and easy to use. So here, now I mentioned when a client disconnects, right? So it can, whoops. Um, so it can, let's say we could have inconsist inconsistency or network loss of connection, right? I might be in different regions, you know, AWS regions, I might have different providers. It could be a client side issue. Um, servers could fail. Um, it could be on premise, cloud or in hybrid uh, or the actual service itself, maybe OS or app or inside of the client could uh, have some service failures and resulting in disconnected clients. So here I've got my deployment. So how do we resolve this? Well, we could improve our DR and active active types of deployments to handle faults better. We have our server side processing, like oh, what happens when a session is disconnected and using our framework, these handlers, it's automatically plugged into diffusion that it knows when these things happen. And then, as I had mentioned er earlier, the client side processing. So in these, these types of uh, scenarios, need to be thought through and implemented against when we're distributing data that affects revenue, affects our performance um, in our distribution strategies themselves. And here's just kind of another example of what happens. I had mentioned that we keep queues, um, let's say on the uh, server side and then on the client side, there are queues and there are recovery bro brokers or recovery buffers, excuse me. And there's correlation of um, the data it happens from my distribution server itself, my event server, and the actual client itself, so that when it becomes reconnected, then these messages are delivered, or we could have that completion option, and it only sends the uh, latest uh, data itself. So again, this allows you to get very sophisticated with your architecture on how you want to distribute the data. Now let's talk a little bit about security. 
So we have a full role-based RBAC um, security system inside of Diffusion itself. There are users that we call principals, and then there are uh, roles. And we secure against um, the typical um, functions such as against topics, you know, read, update, modify, select, or um, whether they can send messages to uh, handlers or different sessions. We have fine grained session management as well to features like time series. The time series, think of a time series topic as something that contains historical data. So you may have, let's say, FX data, currency data that changes very rapidly, but you want to keep the historical data over a specified period of time in memory that's highly performant. And that's implemented seamlessly inside of uh, time series. And then session logs. Now, there are other security um, features from the administrative and management perspective also that we could handle. But you can see here that we can add those same um, paths to secure very fine grain by topic, or we could add wildcards in here to secure um, a, a wider range of topic paths with a, a single rule. So once these, these roles are assigned, then they can be assigned to a uh, principal. And so we have this feature of role inheritance, so we can specify specific roles and, and add inheritance from other types of roles. And these roles uh, and users could uh, really be across operations, analytics, brokers, in this use case, hedge. Um, and to speak about also anonymous, so we have the ability for anonymous action and what to do when anonymous users come in. Um, another piece of security here is the TLS um, support, right? So TLS 1.3 uh, is a great improvement over TLS 1.2. You get so many different or more uh, ciphers with 1.3 and you have, uh, it's an improved level of security uh, as well. So Diffusion stays uh, in the forefront with uh, updates to new security protocols. And um, we've been um, TLS 1.3 for quite a while now and looking forward to the next iterations um, that we can implement in our platform in a very agile fashion. And, and then here, I, I kind of wanted to um, talk about our handlers again. So inside of our session handler, we have the ability to see who's connected when they're lost, and again, custom properties by session. What's the IP address? What's their location? That, that kind of data is inside of the sessions. And then this notion of authentication handlers, right? So, and uh, authentication um, uh, chains. Again, handler is another part of our framework. So maybe a user's identified in LDAP, but they're not in SSO, right? Maybe they're not in OAuth, right? So there's a chain that goes through. Let's go check these different security subsystems for authentication for a particular user. Again, so we're not locked into one specific security subsystem. We really expand the security subsystem for your distribution architectures where you have clients that are connecting in for that particular data versus other brokers that may be focused on one very specific security infrastructure. So, and again, we're coming back to that framework, right? So we have this notion of control clients that act as intermediaries that basically take data from, subscribe to data from Diffusion, perform some action and perform and publish a, a response back, right? So in some of the FX data, we might want to perform some additional cleansing or, or proprietary functions against it. I mentioned our session handler. Um, what happens when somebody asks from the distribution side for data that does not exist. Let me uh, subscribe to a topic that really nobody knows about, right? And so um, rather than just say, you know, give them some kind of error or not respond um, in some situations, um, you can um, create this missing topic handler that recognizes that and then goes off and performs some kind of business function and makes that data then available to that downstream uh, application. And by the way, as we're adding users, removing users, as we're defining roles, as we're, we're creating new um, groups, um, there is no um, rebalancing that's going on as part of this distribution architecture. It's a reliable environment. Um, there are not any delays that happen 
Okay, so um, use of diffusion has addressed um, the rebalancing requirements for potentially other distribution technologies that are out there. But kind of getting back on topic here, we also have authentication um, handlers as well. And I spoke about that authentication chain on, on the previous uh, slide. So let's get into personalization. So we've kind of gone through how to connect into Kafka, how to collect the data from Kafka, some of the wrangling that we're, we're performing, and then creating those reference trees, right? And so we've created this great virtualized logical structure of this topic tree, this live data model of data that's available, and we have an understanding of whom our consumers are. And so when we start to think about personalization, we might want to personalize the data by individual or maybe by group. Somebody's part of this particular broker group. Maybe it could be by geo, by location. Maybe I've got promotions or additional capabilities by device such as mobile or any type of custom entity for those master data management fans out there. Um, we can start to segment data or create rules, personalized rules against those types of, uh, of entities, any, anything, any, any kind of organization that you want to introduce, okay? Very, very powerful. And so I've shown earlier that you've got currency events that may be coming in. You've got pricing events. You might have tiered events. You have a large number of events that are coming in from Kafka. And so they're coming in to um, diffusion as event topics. We have those topic view uh, rules, and then we perform uh, security against that. And you get this, this topic tree with reference topics. But now you have consumers for that that have historically been subscribing using those topic selectors that I've been discussing, right? So, uh, and again, different Delta capabilities, different localities, um, topic replication kind of going on. But now, what if I wanted to take these reference topics and then create rules by who the user is? So if the user came in and said, just give me prices for this currency, that, that's all they've asked for, I, I'm in full control of what tier to provide to them, what data I wanna provide. They may ask for some data, but now I have an automated way to provide the data that I want them to see, not necessarily providing exactly what they asked for. So here they've asked for a reference topic, right? And basically through my rules now, these session rules, it might resolve to reference topic zero or one or two based upon my business rules. And these could be against users or groups that have rules inside of them. Okay, I'll show an example of that inside the product in a second. Now distribution, now, as the data is coming from Kafka into Diffusion, Diffusion has the abilities for deltas that I mentioned earlier. We can map the data into uh, uh, much finer grained and, and focused events. We have throttling capabilities to say, hey, only send one message every five seconds, or maybe delay the entire distribution for these particular, and this is topic by topic, delay the distribution for this topic by 10 seconds, by 10 minutes, whatever SLAs you want to use. I've uh, shown also uh, and discussed the conflation uh, feature, only send the latest, and then putting in architectures for things like topic replication. Um, basically taking a to topic data and distributing that across a wide number of different servers for support of very high levels of concurrency and performance. So when we look at a basic deployment, you may have diffusion that's on-prem, it's in cloud, it's part of a Docker image managed by Kubernetes, just very straightforward. And then you may have your clients and a firewall load balancer that sit, sits in between it. Now with diffusion, you have the ability, again, from your distribution architecture of having a multi-node cluster where you have session and topic replication going on. But I haven't mentioned session replication. So what happens when a user gets disconnected to a specific server itself, through session replication, their session is dynamically picked up by a different server. They don't see that particular disconnect if the issue is on a diffusion server itself. 
Okay. And then getting to now that we have uh, spoken about our clustered solutions, also the ability for fan out servers on the edge, right? Starting to distribute to support that very high concurrent number of consumers and performance uh, requirements using again, features such as session uh, replication, okay? And then ultimately monitoring and, and managing the uh, platform. So Diffusion does provide um, a tailpipe, so to speak, of data that's tightly integrated with uh, management protocols or, or platforms such as Prometheus, um, as well as having a uh, JMX uh, interface. Um, so we report on the state of the server, topic data that's going through it, memory, number of sessions, et cetera. Um, and then what you'll see down here on the bottom, so um, for one particular, so here for NFL play-by-play -play data that's streaming through it, I was able to obtain 99.28% uh, 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 delta compression uh, inside of that. But I can see the number of values that are going through it, and I have the ability to um, define specific collectors as well, right? So I can say, hey, I'm only interested in NFL play-by-play -play or FX data for hedgers, um, et cetera. And I can create different collectors and start to collect um, independent values and, and manage these by the type of data or application um, that it's going through, okay? So that's kind of the end of the uh, push technology distribution solutions for Kafka um, webinar. And uh, here, uh, you know, come out to our website and um, we have software downloads, community editions, we've got um, software as a service called Diffusion Cloud um, Access for trials. You'll find uh, some technical and uh, industry webinars out there as well, tutorials. Uh, we're on GitHub uh, as well with some uh, code examples that are out there. Um, lots of product training available to you as well. And um, you can start to see how Diffusion works with a, a source to target um, environment that we call the playground. Uh, it doesn't really give you the chance to get in there and, and pull any levers, but uh, it, it kind of gives a little bit of the notion of, of what's going on, okay? So uh, we are very developer focused. We uh, definitely are a platform that organizations, when they start using us, are uh, pleasantly surprised about how we reduce the requirements um, for their dev uh, and, and how we streamline that and how we actually add uh, innovation, uh, really rapidly improving their ability to release real-time event-driven applications, okay? Now, for specifically for Kafka, um, please visit our uh, these URLs or this URL right here, and uh, you'll see a step-by-step -step tutorial uh, with Sample Cloud. And again, at dashboard.diffusion.cloud, uh, you can begin using it. It starts very rapidly, and there is a uh, quick start guide um, that will show you through how to use the API um, and uh, really start to, to leverage it. I'm going to kind of switch out of presentation mode right now. And let's see if there are uh, any questions. And I can see that we don't have any open questions uh, from this webinar. So uh, at this point, I would like to uh, thank you for um, your attendance and um, please stay tuned to pushtechnology.com. Uh, we do have uh, up, uh, further webinars coming out with more interesting information. And again, thank you and have a pleasant day.